ông quỳ chụp ông cái nội dung đẹp bậc cả to cái chấm đặc ca này thì sẽ đặc ca hay nâng cái đó là pitika chun từ đồng nào thay về nhá đồng bay mình to cái đạp bằng hai ai cả xa là còn lư vẽ pon cho mình nâng là tuần đầu tiên được bảo trì được giàu phong trưởng Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, when we broke, I was uh, halfway through a, a series of documents that confirm the time period during which Noon Chea uh, was the acting Prime Minister. And I appreciate uh, the Chamber bearing, bearing with me through this uh, uh, more tedious group of documents. I will get through these quickly and we will move on to some hopefully more interesting documents. Um, E3 slash 287, E3 slash 287 is the uh, FIBIS reports for May 1977, and there are two references in here uh, at Khmer. 00679826 through 28, English 00168121 through 22, and French 00698451 through 52. You will find a, a message of greeting sent by State Presidium President Hugh Sun Khan and Acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea to the leaders of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam on the 29th of April 1977. And in the same document at Khmer, 00-67-98-49-50, English 00-16-81-51, French 00-69-84-66. You will find a message of congratulations from State Presidium Chairman Hugh Sum Khan and Acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea sent to the President and Prime Minister of Sri Lanka on the 22nd of May 1977. The next document, E3 slash 2677, E3 slash 2677 is a, a circular from the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, dated the 5th of July 1977. And let me just read uh, from a short excerpt from this report uh, from the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Quote, According to various reports, Salat Sar, former Gen Secretary General of the Cambodian Communist Party, who has been missing for a long time, and Pol Pot, who was appointed as the head of the Cambodian government in April 1976, are one and the same person. Since September 1976, Mr. Noon Chea has been standing in for Pol Pot, but there has been no confirmation of the latter either being ill or being eliminated. Next is E3 slash 143. E3 slash 143. This is a Fibus collection for the month of September 1977. And this is almost one year after the announcement that Nguyen Chea would be serving as interim acting prime minister. There are four reports this month in which uh, he is referred to still as the acting prime minister. At Khmer 00904132, English 00168724 is a August 
31, 1977 message of congratulations sent from acting Prime Minister Yin Chea to the Prime Minister of Malaysia at Khmer 0090 through 34, English 0016 through 28 is a 1 September 1977 message of greetings from Acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea to the leaders of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. At Khmer 00904137338, is a record of a September 1977, 1977 8, 2 September 1977 speech by the Burmese Foreign Minister referring to his meeting with, quote, acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea, end of quote. And in the same document, E3-143, at Khmer 00, Six five eight four four six through four eight English zero zero one six eight seven three eight through three nine and French zero zero six eight seven one four six through four eight and we'll see a 8 September 1977 message of greetings from Acting Prime Minister Min Chea to the North Korean President Kim Il-sung. Your Honors, uh, next document is E3-486. E3-486. This document is a uh, 29 September 1977 report by the uh, French ambassador to Thailand uh, who reports on a official announcement uh, from Radio Phnom Penh. Uh, and he reports uh, both on the announcement of the existence of the Communist Party of Kampuchea and on Pol Pot's a trip to China. And in regards to Mr. Nguyen Chea, the document reads as follows. Pol Pot's reemergence raises a number of questions. As Prime Minister of Democratic Kampuchea, since the March 76 elections, he had to resign from his post for health reasons on 26 September in the same year. It was Nguyen Chea, chairman of the Standing Committee of the Cambodian People's Representative Assembly, who took over as acting prime minister. And the last two documents on this issue, Your Honors, E3-89, E3-89 is a interview of Ng Sri that was conducted on the 17th of December, 1996. And the reference I'll read is from Khmer, 0006-2487, English 0041-7626, and French 0033-2707. And at this part of the interview, Ng Sri was asked about the public announcement that Pol Pot was ill and what the truth was of this matter. Ng Sri responded as follows, quote, he was not sick, that's the truth. At the time, he really did have a crisis, he himself did not know what it was. Continuing on. 
Ying Suri refers to the fact. So then I, first Deputy Prime Minister, had to go up and replace him. But no, Noon Chea replaced him. From what I know of the matter, there were discussions between Pol Pot and Noon Chea. There were discussions. And later, or also in 1996, uh, Ng Suri's Democratic National Union Movement, DINAM, issued a statement on the 8th of September 1996, which is document E3-86, and in the first section of that document, made the following statement, quote, in fact, when Pol Pot, then Prime Minister, made a false declaration about his pretend illness in 1976, it was not His Excellency Ng Suri, then Deputy Prime Minister in charge of Foreign Affairs, who assumed the post of Prime Minister at interim. On the contrary, it was Noon Chea, the personality number two in the party, and then president of the National Assembly, who was designated by Pol Pot to replace him as prime minister ad interim. End of quote. I'll now move on to another group of documents. And the next group of documents I, I will present are a few of the telegrams and reports that were sent to Noon Chea uh, during the Democratic Kampuchea period. These documents are relevant because the subjects of these telegrams and reports reflect the various roles and responsibilities of Noon Chea in the party and in the DK regime. The first two documents I will present uh, indicate or show that Noon Chea had responsibility in relation to forced movements of the population. E3-154, E3-154 is a document the chamber is well familiar with. It is a, a 30, the 30 November 1975 uh, telegram uh, from uh, the Isam secretary that uh, discusses the uh, movement of the Cham population uh, out of areas of the Isam. And I will not read this document uh, again as it, it has been covered many times. I will simply note that the document is addressed to Pol Pot and that Noon Chea is one of the few people who is copied on uh, this matter. Second is document E3-1188, E3-1188. Your Honors, this is a a telegram uh, from a northeast zone cadre boot, boot to respected brother dated uh, the 29th of January 1976, copied to Noon Chea, and the subjects in this telegram in paragraph number two include the evacuation of people from Laos who were then moved into a number of villages and communes. It also discusses, discusses some people who were moved into a village uh, named South Village. And the report talks about, in section 3B, indicates, quote, the biographies of all key people in the village were compiled. The next group of telegrams uh, that I would like to refer your honors to 
are some telegrams that show Nunchea's responsibility for military matters. And there are a five, a series of five telegrams that were sent between the dates of 24 September 1976 and 6 October 1976. The document numbers are E3 slash 1122, E3 slash 1123, E3 slash 1124, E3 slash 1125, and E3 slash 1126, consecutive numbers, E3 numbers. Each of these telegrams is a report from the Division 164 Deputy Secretary named Dim. And these, these are presented, Your Honors, because of the people who are copied on the telegram. For each of these five telegrams, there are only two people who are copied outside of Division 164. One is Brother Q Son Sen, and the other is Brother Nguyen Chea. These documents are thus submitted to show that Nguyen Chea did have a military role in relation to this division. To the center divisions. And as further confirmation of that, I would present document E3 slash 1135. E3 slash 1135. The, as I mentioned, the series of telegrams we just looked at from the Division 164 that were copied only to Nunchea and Sonsen ran from the period of late September to early October. And document E3-1135 is a document dated 19 October 1976. And in this report, which is from the Division 164 Secretary Mies Mut. Mies Mut writes a report to Son Sen, Brother 89. The subject of the report is a cadre's wife who had been in the hospital but had disappeared with a number of people. And the relevance of this document, the reason it is put forth as particularly important, is the note that was writ that is written on the left side uh, on the day after the report was sent by Division 164 Secretary Mutt. On the next day, Son Sen, under his alias Q, forwards the report, and the person he forwards it to is Bong Nguyen, Nguyen Chea. And in his note to Nguyen Chea, point number two requests to search for the people who are missing related to this matter. This series of documents, therefore, Your Honors, is put before you to show the responsibility of Nguyen Chea for matters relating to the military, including security issues relating to personnel and cadres. The next two documents your honors, are uh, two reports uh, from the same date, the 12th of October, 1976. Uh, these reports are from the Secretary of Sector 105, Lang, and the first of these is E3 
slash 1192 E3 slash 1192 and in this telegram uh, Lang writes directly directly to brother Nguyen to request a number of matters and in the second telegram, which is document E3-1189, E3-1189, a telegram from the same date from Sector 105 Secretary addressed to beloved and missed two brothers, and Noon Che's name is the only name that appears in the distribution list. Lang writes, quote, I wish to ask you about the opening of a party school. When can Ankar open such school? These documents, Your Honor, show role and responsibility relating to this autonomous sector reported directly to the center, and it shows his responsibility for political education and party schools. The next document I would present is document E3 slash 1154. E3 slash 1154. This is a letter written by a cadre from the logistics office of the general staff named Cole, dated the 15th of March 1977. And Cole's letter is addressed to Brother Paul, Brother Nguyen, and Brother Pim, referring to Sao Pim, East Zone Secretary. The letter uh, reads as follows. I will read a number of passages from it. Dear respected brother, first of all, Please forgive me for writing directly to you, which is contrary to the protocol. While you are extremely overwhelmed by a great deal of leadership tasks, well respected Bong, I trust in you, who are the perceptive and fair Ankar of the party. I abide by and trust in the party, so please let me, let me report my own business to the party as follows. Well respected Bong, on the evening of 14 March 1977, Brother Tum, this is a reference to Seat Che alias Tum, who was the Deputy Secretary of the General Staff. Brother Tum personally called me to work with him. In his opinion, what was important was that Ankar told him that the enemy had implicated me. Ankar wants his clarification if I got involved by accident so that I could report to the party and ask the party for tolerance. With this regard, I informed him I was not involved with the enemy betraying the party. Continuing uh, two paragraphs below, quote, I do not trust Bong Tum with this regard, which was the reason that I did not report it to him, and I am writing directly to you. I sent a letter through Ya at the logistics section to you to report inappropriate activities of Tom in order for the party to re-educate him so that he will not commit more serious acts. At that time, I did not know that Ya was a traitor. Continuing in the next paragraph, quote, Well respected Bong, I leave my fate to the party. If the party considers me a traitor linking with Yah, I will not deny it. 
However, based on my past, present, and future stance, regardless of any situation, I will always love and respect the party and respect the party line. We will never betray the party. If I have any flaws in my daily work performance, I agree that the collective and the party re-educate me. Well-respected Bong, please forgive me for any awkwardness in this report and other errors we could not grasp. I completely trust the party. I leave my life in the party. Dated the 15th of March 1977. For the record, Your Honors, Tuch Hang alias Cole entered S21 on the 2nd of May 1977 and was executed on the 9th of December 1977. This document your honors, is submitted because it is particularly relevant to show the role and authority of Nguyen Chea in relation to the arrest and purges of cadres. The next document is E3-892, E3-892. This is a report dated 29th of October 1977 from the East Zone Secretary under his alias Chon, addressed to Office 870, copied on this was Uncle Nguyen. And let me read from the last paragraph of the telegram, quote, we would like to know what Office 870 is going to do with Vietnamese caught at villagers' houses in Tadev village. If Office 870 wants these Vietnamese, we will send them. Now they are kept being interrogated. This document is submitted, Your Honor, to show Nguyen Chea's responsibility again for matters relating to security. Next, E3-181. E3-181. This is a report dated the second, I'm sorry, a report dated the 14th of February, 1978, from Son Sen, using the alias 47, addressed to respected beloved and missed brother, the two people who were shown on the distribution list, our grand uncle, referring to Pol Pot, and grand uncle Nguyen. And in regards to the substance of this report, I will just read from one item, item number five, which reads as follows. Comrade Tal captured two UN heads, age 17 and 27. They were sent to S21. Next is document E3-8. Six seven E three slash eight six seven. This is also a report from San Sen under alias forty seven. This one is dated the twentieth of March nineteen seventy eight. And copied on this report are Uncle Uncle Nguyen, Brother Van, and Brother Born. In paragraph two of this report, there is a following report, quote, we destroyed approximately 100 enemy combatants. We captured three, two were shot and killed, 
because they jumped into the river, one of them is kept to be sent to 21 this evening. And at the end of this telegram, Son Sen reports that, quote, we continued fighting mainly using landmines and spikes. Next, document E3 slash 519. E3 slash 519. This is a a telegram dated 29 March 1978 from Comrade Pak referring to Central Zone Secretary Kai Pak addressed to Committee 870. The substance of the telegram is a number of individuals who were caught and arrested and Comrade, or the Central Zone Secretary, is seeking information from Ankar on these individuals. The significance, the reason this document is put forward is that the only person identified who was copied on this telegram is Uncle Nguyen. This document, therefore, Again, demonstrates Noon Chea's responsibility with regard to security and matters of discipline of cadres. Document E3 slash 1144. E3 slash 1144. This is a document I presented the other day, a, the uh, 5 September 1977 report from the North Zone Secretary say to Committee 870, and uh, which discusses uh, the uncovery of enemies, including former officials, policemen, or soldiers of the previous regime. I will not repeat the parts I read the other day. I simply note that one of the people who is copied and included in the distribution list is Uncle Nguyen Nguyen Chea. Next, the document E3 slash 898. E3 slash 898. This is a 11 December 1977 a telegram from North Zone Secretary Sai to Committee 870. And it reads as follows. It is requested that Seam Reap and Bonte Sray districts are merged as one because they are adjacent. Seam Reap district comprises 40,000 people. They are mainly new people to be distributed to other districts. The population of Bonte Sray is 20,000, mainly old people. It will be unification among them only if the two districts are made into one, it is easy to be controlled. This document is submitted because one of the people, uh, leaders copied on this matter is Uncle Nguyen, Nguyen Chea, and therefore we submit this document as showing Nguyen Chea's role and responsibility relating to the treatment of new people uh, and locations and relocations of people. The last three telegrams I will present are three telegrams in which Noon Chea is not only copied uh, but there is also a handwritten note in the upper left corner of each of these documents which states Uncle Nguyen. For the record, 
the three documents are E3 slash 1077, E3 slash 1077, and this is a a document that has been presented before. It is the 10 April 1978 telegram report from the North Zone Secretary Tsai, which has extensive discussion about purges, in particular of purges of Sector 103. And in, if you look at the uh, on the screen uh, at the Khmer version of this document, you will see in the upper left-hand corner a handwritten note which states Uncle Nguyen. Next, E3 slash 1008, E3 slash 1008. This is a telegram dated the 12th of April, 1978, from an individual named Rote. Once again, in the upper left-hand corner of the document, you will see Uncle Nguyen's name written in hand. And the last of these reports is E3 slash 156. E3 slash 156. This is a telegram, uh, the telegram from Sector 105 Secretary Sao Sarun to respected brother dated the 23rd of April 1978. It is a telegram that I have previously presented that discusses the arrest of a, the chairman of the repair factory and who had been implicated in a confession and requests instructions or advice from the party on the matter. And again, uh, in the upper left-hand corner of this document, you will see handwriting which states Uncle Nguyen. These documents are submitted to show Nguyen Chea's particular role and responsibility in relation to these matters. I will now turn to some documents that relate to Nguyen Chea's role and responsibilities relating to the military and security apparatus in the Democratic Kampuchea. And Nguyen Chea uh, has made a number of statements that show his role in matters related to security, such as problems of internal enemies or purported spies and traitors. And I would like to start by playing another video clip um, so the AV booth can get ready. This will be clip number four. Clip number four. And, Your Honors, um, this comes from the same uh, video that I presented earlier from a video titled Additional Footage Noon Chea Interview E186.1R. This excerpt is from 19 minutes and 11 seconds to 19 minutes and 44 seconds, and it describes in this part of the uh, interview, Nguyen Chea describes a conversation he had with Pol Pot after liberation. Uh, with your leave, Mr. President, I would ask the AV now play clip number four, which is titled The Problem of Spies. ចាក់ស្រាយនៅវីដេអូក្លីបទីបុនលើក្រុងទូរទស្សន៍តាមការ
อัญญาอัญญาสรีสรา,สราสราเป็นเหมือนลุ่เป็นใจลุยเป็นลาสราที่ยิบความนึกไว้ยูรานเนอร์สนูนเชียสรูลและในพาร์ตี้พอลิซีส์เรื่องของการประกอบการและการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับการเลือกตั้งของประชาชนและสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องก Another video clip for the AV booth. This one is clip number five. Clip number five. Uh, it is uh, document E 93 7.3 R V 0071748. It is an interview. By Tet Sambat, that is entitled "Noon Chea on Killing Traitors." And Mr. President, at this time, we'd like to ask the AV booth to play clip number five, which is titled "Killing Traitors." ของการส่งตัวการมาดูมาดูกลุ่มกบฏกบฏและกองส่งที่ผู้นึกส่งกับตู้ลงการสร้างจนได้อย่างไรบ้างสมองที่จะไม่ต้องเนี่ยเครื่องมันเห็นทานี่ติดตัวบริษัทแล้วก็ทายเองโคเคิลตอนนี้ยึดมือตอนมือจะส่งส่งมือกดหน้าบอกเจี๊ยบตาหน้าก็มองมือจีบกุ้งบอกตัวอันนึงนึกกดหน้าบอกเจี๊ยบตาหน้าเติมมือจังมาเคยมือตุ่มหุ้งเว้ยอันนั้นเราเป็นเจษณะตุ่มหุ้งเป็นนาโฆษณาเป็นใจใจนะมันเป็นโดยตายถึงมันเรื่องธรรมดาได้มันเป็นเรื่องบัดบัดบังตึกใดมาอย่างอาปีจังอาไหมนะเรื่องบัดบังตึกใดปัจจัยมุ่ยเจี๊ยบกับปุ่ยเจียนมุ่ยตรงมูลเฮ้ยบัดบังแต่ละโคตรมารับสัตว์มันเงี้ยเรอได้เชื่อทำต้องบอกปุ๋ยหนึ่งเอามารับสัตว์สัตว์ตะวันนะคนเจ้ายังจำนอนกล้อยมาเจอจีไซรูปเพียรจีขมายเป็นตะเคลมซาวิจีไซอันนี้ยังจะทลังเมื่อนั่งบานเฮียนวินิชัยทั้งกาดอสันเต่าตอนนั้นเบอร์สมันมืออีกตัวเลี้ยนะมือเคยจะเจ็บเอียดนะเคยไปเรื่องอันนั้นอันโซ่คนใหญ่นะอันนั้นอัดได้ไปเจี๊ยบเต่าเฮ้ยเต่าเฮ้ยบาปุ่นหนึ่งนู้เธอขยงยูนยูนไว้เองบ่โหดกี่กระดับบานเฮ้ยสมอตรองหนึ่งกี่เฮ้ยดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธดูดีเอวีบูธ
uh, nomnang sapinya. Many former comrades of yours, senior members of the party, were purged and lost their lives. Not many, some didn't admit their mistakes, but others knew and they admitted them in our meetings and they were accepted. We didn't kill many, we killed only the bad people, not the good. Your Honours, the statements on this subject that Noon Chea has provided to Tet Sambat that were published in his book are even more detailed and direct. And I will now read from a, a few more excerpts uh, from that book, document E152.2. And the first is at Khmer 0085-8308-09, English 0075-7520-21, and French 0084-9414-14. Let me repeat the Khmer number, 0085-8308-09. This excerpt reads as follows, quote, The enemies were everywhere, and they were blamed for everything. According to Noon Chea, there were Americans, Thais, Vietnamese, and French, so determined to overthrow the Khmer Rouge that they threw away rice, killed peasants, and created general havoc in the regime, aided by Cambodian conspirators. A specific quote is then attributed to Nguyen Chea. Quote, we knew that there were many enemies hiding in our regime and planning to destroy our policies. So we were very busy trying to find the enemies. The passage continues. In this culture of fear, Cambodians were encouraged to root out traitors and name spies. Eventually, neighbors turned against neighbors, sisters turned against brothers, and husbands turned against wives. Another specific quote attributed to Noon Chea then follows, quote, There were many spies in Cambodia. They had been hiding in Cambodia and destroying the internal party for a long time, Noon Chea said, pointing his index finger for emphasis, end of quote. The next reference, Your Honor, from the book is at Khmer 0085-8310-11, English 0075-7521, French 0084-9416. This passage reads as follows, quote, even for Noon Chea, the killing of enemies is sometimes difficult to explain. When we once asked him why the Khmer Rouge didn't put the so-called enemies in prison for life, why the leaders felt they had to be killed, he replied, quote, that is an easy question to ask, but a difficult one to answer. After a pause, he continued, quote, But at that time, we had no proper prisons, and if we kept them, they would spread and produce their eggs, and many more would have been killed, end of quote. Next reference 
is from Khmer 0085-8340, English 0075-7531, French 0084-9435, which reads as follows. Noon Chea said he was not particularly disturbed when his former comrades and friends were executed, attributing a quote to Noon Chea, quote, the party decided to kill them because they were betraying the party and the nation. I was not scared or sad when they were killed. They had done wrong and betrayed us, so they received the kind of treatment they deserved. We were friends, but friendship and political work are separate." End of quote. And in their discussions, Noon Chea admitted to Tet Sambat that he was involved in decisions to purge party cadres throughout the DK regime and that he assumed direct responsibility for S-21 in the fall of 1977. This passage is from Khmer 00. 8583310 English 0075521 French 0084941616 reads as follows quote for the first half of the Khmer Rouge rule Noon Chea didn't have direct control over S-21, but as one of the top leaders of the movement, he was involved in decisions to purge top cadre. And when Khmer Rouge Defense Minister Son Sen was dispatched to take care of border conflicts with Vietnam and growing tension with the Eastern Zone in the fall of 1977, Noon Chea became the de facto head of the interrogation center, according to Brother Number Two and according to testimony from Deutsch in the spring of 2009. End of quote. Noon Chea has discussed and admitted to Tet Sambat his role in discussions on the fate of high-ranking cadres accused of being traitors, such as East Zone Secretary and fellow Standing Committee member Sao Pim. The next excerpt I will read is from Khmer 0085. 8355 English 0075 French 0084-9446. And that passage or excerpt from the book reads as follows. Quote. There had been other times when Cadre imprisoned in S-21 accused Sao Pim of being a fellow traitor, but Noon Chea defended him, saying the accusations weren't true. In the end, though, Noon Chea succumbed to the allegations against a man he thought of as his brother and left him to a traitor's Fate. According to reports Noon Chea received, which meant confessions extracted from S-21, Sao Pim was selling rice to Vietnam without asking the center if he could do so. 
And in regards to Khoi Thun, the Minister of Commerce and former Secretary of the North Zone, at Khmer 0085350, English 0075734, and French 0084942343. At this part of the book, Noon Chea told Tetsambat as follows, quote, Suspicion was cast on those close to Khoi Thun, including Dun, who headed the party's center office, known as Office 870. Soon after Khoi Thun was taken into custody, Dun was arrested. Nun Chea said Dun was Khoi Thun's man as Khoi Thun had pushed for his people to be appointed to the center office. In his confession, Doin accused Khoi Thun of being a longtime member of the CIA. Again, Nun Chea's accusations reflect what Doin said in his confessions. Doin destroyed equipment, and when he did deliver goods, it was only to his people. Nun Chea said, matter-of-factly, that Doon was killed because he was, quote, unquote, Khoi Tun's string. Continuing a quote from Noon Chea, Khoi Tun was the first one we found had betrayed the organization, and we were very surprised, Noon Chea said. After we arrested him, we saw that there were many people under him, and we knew that our internal organization was not clean. Uh, Mr. President, uh, if this is a convenient point, I can pause here and pick up after the lunch break. ຈະກັນປະຕຸບລົງຈໍາຄັ້ງກ້າວສາທາລະນະການນີ້ໃນຫມູ່ກອບໃຫ້ນ້ອງຄູນກອດຫມູ່ຈົກລວມສັບນາ